to this edition of The Righteous Bow Jambo. Uh, this time we have a first for the program. We have a special guest co-host, my charming daughter <laughs> Ivy, the foul princess herself. It's me! The purpose of today's exercise is to take a very famous Greatest Hits album and rank on that album the Greatest Hits in order of magnitude. So from the least great of the great to the greatest of the great. And hopefully this will be an ongoing series where we have guest hosts going through the catalogues of various other classic acts. Today's album in question is Abba Gold. I hope I've got that on frame because I haven't turned my little camera thing around. <laughs> Abba Gold was released in a standardised format in 2008 and promptly became the third biggest selling album ever in Australian history. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I thought it was 2009. Well, there you are. Johnny Farnham's Whispering Jack and Bat Out of Hell by Meatloaf have both outsold the, the only records, but this one is still selling strong. So we're going to start um, looking at the tracks thereupon. Um, Ivy, you can kick us off. What did you think was the weakest song on the Greatest Hits LP? I think it's a tie for me. Mm -hmm. I think it's either um, I Have a Dream yeah. or Oh, Thank You for the Music. Okay, so they're both big stagey songs. Well, they're definitely iconic ABBA songs, but I think the problem with them is nobody necessarily relates them to ABBA. Like, you could say I have a dream or um, thank you for the music, but I don't think anyone go, hmm, yes, ABBA. Yeah, I, I, I think Benny and Bjorn are really showing their long-term ambition to become legitimate theatre writers with those sort of stagey, show tuning type songs. I also think it's just too many ballads for one album. I mean, you've got I Have a Dream, uh, Winner Takes It All, I ha um, Thank You For The Music. I think it's just too much. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with I Have a Dream, also because um, Frida tries hard with the vocal, but the, she's just not mature enough a singer at that point in time to get as She becomes that singer, but she just doesn't have the hooks to get into that song at the time. Mm. Thank You For The Music is probably also down the bottom of the sort of the pile. It has that uh, anthemic quality to it. So I had I Have A Dream at number 19, mm. and Thank You For The Music was number 16 or so. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, my number 18 was Chikatita. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, classic misstep. You've got, a, you've got a slamming super power disco album in Voulez Vous ready to come out. So what are you going to put out as your lead single for it? I know, we had a big hit with Fernando, let's ride it again, pep it up a bit. Let's do another long, sad song. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It's, just, it's essentially just an upbeat Fernando, isn't it? Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come to Fernando in good time. <laughs> um, where do you have, I mean, we've gone to thank you for the music, what, so what are you putting at number 17? I'd probably put, uh, I have a dream there. Then I agree with you on Chikatita. Then I would probably put, um... The winner takes it all. I just, I'm not a fan of it on the ABBA um, soundtrack. See, I think another problem with ABBA, especially for my generation, is trying to put ABBA and Mamma Mia, the movie, yeah. try to separate yeah. them. Because when I think the winner takes it all, all I can think is Meryl Streep belting it on that cliffside. Yeah. And I'm just like, this isn't Meryl Streep. It's, Who is this? <laughs> it's an interesting song. Bjorn took 15 minutes to write that. He was dropped down drunk when he wrote it. And they they asked, was it about your divorce? He said, no, it wasn't about our divorce. There were no winners in our divorce. No. Oh. So that was sweet. And it was also it was also Agnetha's favourite ABBA song, The Winner Takes It All. Hmm. I put money, money, money down the bottom of the No! Head. Yes! No! Yes! No! I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll give you two good reasons. One, it knocked Brian Ferry off number one. And two... The song before it was Dancing Queen. Oh yeah. Very, very difficult song to follow up. And it's but it was six weeks at number one, so I'm not gonna argue with the people. I'm not the problem with this album was except for, you know, those three songs, I have a dream when it takes it all and um I, thank you for the music. The problem was it was such a good greatest hits album. Mm. Like yes, all of these are their hits and then in their twenty fourteen revitalized greatest hit albums, the anniversary edition, it included even more. So it was like, huh, 
Interesting. Um, Russia paid them in oil because there was a, a, an embargo on the rubles. How do you have this knowledge just floating around in your head? I have, I have much more knowledge. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm going to put Fernando down the bottom. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think it's a dull, tedious song that doesn't make any sense. I mean, about the war. But they're on the wrong side of the war. They're, fight, they're not fighting for liberty. They're fighting for a vicious dictator who's invading an independent republic of Texas. Not Texas. <laughs> yeah. He messes with Texas. It was the longest running number one of the physical era on our local charts. It was 14 weeks at number one. Hmm, what else we got down there, Ivy? I'm not sure, because they were all so good. I would say probably knowing me, knowing you. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up when I had like all the ABBA songs on my iPod. I would always skip that one. I never really vibed to it. It was their first real grown up song. Yeah. Because it, it sort of followed Mamma Mia and SOS, and then we had Knowing Me, Knowing You. Yeah, and it's like the second song or something on this album, and it's like you have this great upbeat first starter, and then it's just, oh, breakup, sad. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, I, I have a rather higher opinion of it that we'll, we'll discuss as we go through. I had to leave Lay Your Love On Me down. Lay All Your really? Love On Me down. Yeah, because technically it wasn't a hit. It was never released in Australia. Well, that was rude. Yeah, it was, it was a big hit in England, it was a big hit in Ireland, but um, honestly, if you're going to put Australian songs on there, that goes off and Ring Ring goes on, because Ring Ring was a, was a top ten hit, and it was the song that proved they weren't a one-shot deal after Waterloo. Oh, yeah. So historically, it's very important for them to do, and it's a bloody fantastic song. Oh, yeah? But, yeah. And from here on, though, down, it, it, it's, just, it's just a cavalcade of different shades of excellence. Yeah. I think all these songs are excellent in their own way. So which one is slightly less excellent than all the rest? I'd probably say Waterloo. Waterloo, really? Yeah, I just, I don't know, when you've got, say, like, you know, money, 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 I think quite highly of that, despite not being a capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't communists drink the caffeinated tea? Why? Because proper tea is theft. <laughs> Stop. <clears throat> We're serious. Yes. <laughs> Only 25% of this blog is my extreme right wing opinions. The rest is all music and men's fashion. I'll put Super Trooper as the beginning of it. Yeah. It's a very interesting record because it's slightly new wave, it's a little bit of yeah. old school ABBA, it's a little bit of fun, but it's just got that new wavy edge to it which show that, that not only do they know how to write superb songs, mm -hmm. and this will be increasingly demonstrated as we go along, they also knew how to make superb records. All right. Yeah. I would rank Super Trooper just above Waterloo. I think it's a fun song, especially when you go super ba trooper ba Next, I'd have Take a Chance on Me. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> yeah, but it's, an, it's another one where you're getting a little bit new wavy there. Yeah. It, it's the Human League on Happy Hills. That's where I would probably play some Lay All Your Love On Me. Mm -hmm. Lay All Your Love On Me is getting as close as they got to pure disco music. Yeah. Every, everything else had a bit of a rock edge, but that was as close as you'd get to, to real stomping disco music. So where are we next? I would probably say one of us. So you have the Mamma Mia universe, you have the Alba universe, and yep. then you have the Cher universe with her album Dancing Queen. The original one of us. I like yep. the poppy, you know, sort of tropical. But I also like Cher's ballad. Um, that's that's off their last album, The Visitors, which is a, a really underrated album. Its chief strength is there are parts of it where you can't actually tell it's ABBA. It's right across into the European new wave, but they still have this classic ability to write the heartbreak ballads and give them to Agnetha and say, Sing your heart out, babe. And she does that really well on this. I like one of us, and um, it's probably in the top 10. Yeah. As we go here. But at this point, I'd have Voulez Vu there. Oh, yeah. Um, it's as close as they come to getting that disco, and, and maybe with the accession of Gimme, 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 the, that disco and rock Donna Summery mix going together. Because you can't just say, oh, it's a, it's a disco song. You can't say it's a rock song, but it's rockier than it is a disco song. Yep. And it just slams when they come into that chorus. Oh, yeah. It's just got real womp to it. You just gotta, you know, you yep. boogie, break it down. I've been to the beat two times. No ABBA have played. Good God. Yeah. We're still in that. We're still in those up-tempo, pumpy slammers, yeah. and we come to the come to the uh, the elephant in the room. That album is "Does Your Mother Know?" 
probably not a song for the U2 generation, uh, the Me Too generation, I should say. Yeah. But it's still a slamming song. I would kind of disagree with that, because I think for its time, that was the only song, especially sung by a male, yep. that was saying, no, I'm not going to date underage girls. I agree with that. He's trying to let it down easily. Sorry. He's kid. just saying, you know, you're a kid, I know, you're going to be a bit... Boo boy, gimme gimme. Yep. Gimme gimme a man after midnight, if you will. Yeah. But he's just saying, yeah, kid, does your does your mom even know you're here? Here are the boundaries, we're gonna step down to the boundary. And he does it to a damn good song. Mm. What number are we on? I would probably start placing um money, 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 uh here. Up there, yep. Yeah, I, I just think it's a slam and good song. It just makes you feel like you're that girl. Uh, you own everything and it should be handed to you. Um, I'm getting into sort of the big ballads here, so you've got things like The Name of the Game. Oh yes. Which was a insightful song and it's got a beautiful tune to it. Mm. Where are you? Where are you at next? I would probably put The Name of the Game there as well. Yep. I think that's a song I overlook a lot because, you know, once again, I'm a kid. I Kids my age know this all off Mamma Mia. If it wasn't in the Mamma Mia soundtrack, they don't know it. Yep, and, and Mamma Mia does lean towards the camp side of the band. Yes, it's very disco, very yep. camp stagey. All right, here's where we start throwing rocks. Uh, next at number six is Mamma Mia. Really? Yes. You're going to put Mamma Mia at number Look, six. I, I'm going to put it at number six, but that just says how good the next five songs are going to be. <laughs> I, I counted them in Mamma Mia, there are five killer hooks before you get to the first chorus. There's... There's... Then there's the tune... And there's the little guitar bit in it. And then there's look at me now, will I ever know? And, uh, and then it, all of a sudden it turns into this just one look and I can... It, it's it, very it goes like the field sweet. boots yeah, that's down. It. It's glam rock. And I oh, love glam what's rock. wrong with glam rock? Well, yeah, it's just saying it's number six. Something's got to be number six. And they just happen to be, and I'll give good reasons for them, five better songs. Now we have one. no more numbers no anymore. More We're <laughs> out. We're done. <laughs> have a nice night. <laughs> I've, I've pooped on my three songs. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Alright, so what have you got in, in, in that top half dozen which is the least, most nugatory? I would probably put Volendals. Volevo? Yeah. Yep. Volevo. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. I think it's just, ABBA really define, you know, your glam rock, your new disco. And I will say this, you may want to edit this part out, but I will always say ABBA was more influential than the Beatles when it comes to music. Because people were going to make boy bands anyway, people were going to do that exact same sound, but ABBA... You, you, you started off somewhere I could go with, now, you, now you're going somewhere weird. <laughs> That's and, me! And I don't have 40 minutes on a videotape there to argue this out with you. <laughs> the Beatles, you, you've been saying this since you were six years old, the Beatles are not a boy band. The Osmonds, they were a boy band, but they were good. The monkeys were a boy band. The monkeys were a boy band. <laughs> That's why I wanted you to think I was smart when it came to my music. People say this because they like to be here, oh, you know, the Beatles were so influential and the, and the Velvet Underground were so influential. They were, and they influenced certain people. But ABBA, and particularly the Ramones, oh, were yeah? the phenomenally influential groups to, mm. to, to that particular generation. I just, I think ABBA, especially with your new wave disco, like your Doja Cats, I think without ABBA, that wouldn't have happened. How many of your female singer-songwriters or performers through the 80s started off singing in the back of a hairbrush, dancing in front of a mirror to, to ABBA songs? Probably a lot. Yep. So I'm gonna go with Gimme 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 next. Gimme Gimme Gimme! Now I'm gonna ask about this too. How much does Madonna's sampling of that play in our reassessing what a good pop song that was? At a time when ABBA were forgotten. This was pre Mamma Mia. Who could forget ABBA? No. ABBA went through this massive cultural cringe mm -hmm. almost immediately. After they came cringe? To, after they came to Australia in 1978 and basically demolished the place, you, you can see the records just go straight off the charts, sliding off the charts. That's not nice. Before that, they'd had seven number one hits in a year. Yeah. And, and it slid off. And it was Tony Collette and was it Rachel Griffiths in Muriel's Wedding dancing to Warner yes. Lewis. That broke the cultural cringe and all of a sudden ABBA were back in Australia. And Madonna picked up on that with um, with her sampling and work on that because she's interested in dance music and this was great dance music. What did she sample? 
um, the strings at the beginning of Gimme 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 uh -huh. on um, Hung Up. Oh wow! See, they, they, are, they are touched by the hand of Madonna. <laughs> Alright, so what, what, so what are you looking at around your top five area? Um, have I put Does Your Mother Know Yet? One is, yeah. a, is, a, is a, a top tenner. Yeah, it's definitely one. I would probably put SOS next. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the SOS is a terrific song. Um, a song good enough to be adapted as weird, scary trip hop by Porter's Head, but it was also the song that the Sex Pistols ripped off to write Pretty Vacant. Really? Yep. So that's. Pay up, Sex Pistols. Let's go. <laughs> yep, they, they, they ripped off the riff to, um, to write uh, Pretty Vacant. Um, it's a terrific song. I've got it a little bit higher than that, and we'll, we'll come to that. But like, just the um, chorus. Just sometimes you just feel like screaming that out. And it's a, it's that slight little bit of pickup of pace in the chorus and as well. And even the intro of the do 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 do, and you think it's just gonna be this long sad ballad, and then the chorus hits, and you're like. I'm going to I'm going to cross you here. I'm going to put "Knowing Me, Knowing You" next. Okay. Um, in fact, I will go out on not quite as long a limb as you went out on, and say there are really, <laughs> when it all boils down to it, only two other songs you need to know, and one of them is "Knowing Me, Knowing You." Is the other one "Mamma Mia"? No. I I will say I did like "Knowing Me, Knowing You" a lot better when I re-listened to it as an adult. Yeah, it, it's just, it's so different to the mm. to, to the to the Mamma Mia's and the SOS's that had come out before it. And there's just something so funny about um, them just going, this time I swear, this time we're really through. <laughs> we're through! Yeah. It's also probably Frida's best vocal with, with Abba, is knowing me, knowing mm. me. Alright, where are we at next? You've already bumped uh, Waterloo out of the list, so yeah. What would really give me a man after midnight? Yeah, yep. I, I just love that song. Put it on the party, you'll fill the floor. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think it's one of those songs where even if you've never heard of it or you don't listen to it, you somehow know every word to this song and you're just, you're there for a good time. Not all necessarily a long time, you might be tramp trampled by a few <laughs> Doc Martens there, <laughs> but um, then you're good. As long as there's sparkly Doc Martens. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Um, Alright, so again, crossing you, um, I'm going to put Waterloo up the top simply because it is an infectious fun top 40 record and the purpose of top 40 radio is infectious fun records to stick in your head it was just one of those songs that you waited to come onto the radio the next time you know you gave fernando a bit of smack for not being historically accurate is waterloo historically accurate well no because when napoleon didn't surrender at waterloo he ran away he surrendered later on <laughs> <laughs> and, and no one was listening to me by the point that uh, that he ran away from Waterloo. Don't listen to Abba if you want to learn history. No, no. Um, <laughs> although one of Napoleon's marshals, Bernadotte, of course, became king of Sweden. Good for him! So the, the current Swedish royal family is actually descended from one of Napoleon's marshals. Yeah, what about the winner takes it all? Did you... I think you... you... I put that lower with, um, I have a dream. Like, it's a nice ballad. Yep. I've listened to like four songs already, it's like, ooh, ooh, party, and now yeah. I'm just, oh, I'm sad. <laughs> the, the, I guess the, the main reason I like it is that it, it's the best vocal they ever put on an ABBA record. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's, and you could really, as painful as it was, brings that song to life, and the song actually means something to her, even with Bjorn's kind sentiments. So see, I'll go straight to number two, which is SOS. Really? Um, I think we've discussed that. I think that's yeah. a terrific record. Interesting, uh, one week at number one in Australia. How rude. It was six weeks at number two waiting for Mamma Mia to finish up its ten weeks <laughs> at number one. My number two would be Mamma Mia. Yep. I think it's a solid song. Everybody knows Mamma Mia. Everybody knows that. Song. Even Mario knows it. <laughs> Mamma Mia. <laughs> All right, and I think we can we can both, and I'm very thankful for this because there would <laughs> there would have been a row, there would have been a disinheritance. We can all agree that number one is Dancing Queen. Dancing Queen. It is simply one of the best records ever made. You just get your gals on. You get the gay she's and they's, and it's all just well. The, yes, yes, that, and because it's about discovering your identity mm. at 17 in a disco. Yep, you're 17, life is confusing, boys are bad, but you kind of like them still. But disco, dancing, your gals, ooh. Yep, musically, there's so much happening in it. 
I mean, the, it, people said the Beatles were geniuses because they opened songs with the chorus. This one opens in the middle of the chorus. Oh, <laughs> it's just one of those songs when you're having a terrible day, you just put it on repeat and you're like, wow, maybe life is good. <laughs> but, that, but that was part of the cringe. You know, you, you, had, you had to play that through your headphones. Oh, and like on years. the lowest volume so In nobody case can of the train know. heard you. Yep. The... <laughs> um, it's such a marvellous record. I just, I find it difficult to imagine that it's not the vast majority of people's favourite yep. ABBA song. I think Mamma Mia is definitely always going to be people's number two in both knowing of and just wanting to belt out, but I think when Dancing Queen comes up, it's a different energy, it's a different vibe. I would chuck off the bottom six, I'd put Man in the Middle from their first album in there, ah. because your mother likes it. Oh, <laughs> good for her. <laughs> Summer Night City would go on for Chikatita, because it was actually the hit, Voulez Vu wasn't the hit, Summer Night City was the hit. Mm -hmm. uh, Hole in Your Soul would go on for Money, Money, Money. Um, Fernando would be replaced by the title track for The Visitors, which is almost a prog song, it's so un -ABBA. But uh, it still still packs all of those elements into five and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a really interesting song. The day before you came has to be on there. That's that's another wonderful ballad from that last album, The Visitors. And of course, Aleo with your love on me, au revoir, ring ring, hello. When I looked at this track, I thought, yep, yeah, all definitely ABBA hits. But I was shocked that one song was like shocked to my very core did it did you question your your values of your life yes i did that's why she's a communist folks. yes um thanks carl i was shocked and disgusted i nearly called off the record label myself and said what the heck guys well they're for polydor they're they're they're, they're german bureaucrats they don't know anything about music so what, what's the song honey honey why is honey honey not on here I thought for one moment you were going to say, I do, I do, I do, I do. I hate I do, I do. I, do, I know, I do. that would have, no. been, would have been last. It's I'm the, out of the will. It's the Andy Dancing Queen. <laughs> no, honey, honey, why is that not on here? I would bump off either I Have a Dream or Thank You for the Music because they're both very similar songs, very anti abba Put honey, honey on that. Ivy, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. I like your new docs as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm definitely an ABBA knowledge. I have docs on. Got your docs on. jeans. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're... Been to the beat twice. I would love to come back. Good, good, good. I good, reckon good. we should discuss our top 10 SoundCloud rappers. <laughs> All right, it's been a joy. We're going to wind up here. If anybody has strong and contentious opinions like on... Like me. Uh, <laughs> if anyone has strong and contentious opinions on the subject of ABBA and the ranking of their songs or they just want to profess their profound ABBA love or profound ABBA disdain because this is a free speech channel, do so down in the comments below. And if you have any problems with what I said about the Beatles, I'm not sorry, they were not that good. She comes from Ipswich, she probably carries a weapon. <laughs> I went from Kabulcha to Ipswich. Yeah. Don't test me. Public school. So, until the next time we meet together in good company, or the nasty YouTube police shut our channel down. So, until the next time, <laughs> I've said this 75 times.